वी हैव विथ अस बटरफ्लाई मैन ऑफ इंडिया आइजैक किमकर आइजैक सर हाउ मेनी स्पीशीज ऑफ बटरफ्लाईज आर फाउंड इन इंडिया actually you know uh, you go to see there are few countries like india actually you know mm-hmm. we have got 1500 species in the indian region mm-hmm. and india may be around something like 1300 uh, plus okay. but uh, you know uh, india is so vivid we have himalayas we have rajas uh, deserts in rajasthan then mm-hmm. we have western forest ghats. western ghats so this kind of diversity not every country has got mm-hmm. so uh, we have got that kind of diversity and that is what actually makes so much wildlife animals birds insects butterflies in india yeah. and i'm telling you that india is so vivid and so diverse that one lifetime is not enough yeah. to see and know india yeah. butterflies actually showed me india how beautiful oh. our country is oh butterflies showed how beautiful yeah. our country is yeah. which is the smallest butterfly and which is the largest butterfly yeah we have uh, largest also and we have smallest also the smallest is as small as a little finger's nail that is the uh, grass jewel the small grass jewel uh-huh. it's almost like 14 to 12 mm you know very tiny butterfly you might have you might miss it it's usually among the grasses uh-huh. and then we have the southern bird wing female yes. not the male but the female that occurs on the western ghats uh-huh. right from uh, so- southern Maha- so- maharashtra to all the way to kerala and tamil nadu mm-hmm. so this southern birdwing female is about 190 mm oh. that makes it the largest butterfly in india and female butterfly is the largest yeah, butterfly yeah. <laughs> yes 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 she has to carry eggs and she has to travel many to to find the larval host plant so she has to be strong <laughs> We hear so many stories about metamorphosis of butterflies. Yes, yes, yes. Tell us that magical actually, story. Yes, actually, truly, you know, watching butterflies emerge and that all all the process so magical, mm. you know, and every time it's you know I've seen several times happening in front of me, but every time it fascinates me, you know, yeah. that the caterpillar hatching out from its egg, it is it's the egg shell first. Mm. The egg shell is the first meal. Mm. and then it start eating the uh, larval food plant and it will eat only those la- uh, plants which the mother has laid eggs on and then the caterpillar grows fast you know like a glutton it just nothing but just a glutton keeps on eating because it has to race against the time and then it goes and uh, you know uh, tries to find a secure place to pupate okay it's a open uh, pupa uh-huh. but what happens the caterpillar skin is no longer required it comes out uh-huh. and the pupa is already there inside uh-huh. and within the 15 to 20 days a magic takes place you know uh-huh. the entire uh, uh, organs of uh, caterpillars dissolve and new entities form mm. I- inside and on the 15 day you see that the beautiful butterfly comes out from the pupa it walks oh. out and it hangs with his wings wings of course initially they are crumpled but slowly they expand uh-huh. and then they take off uh, blue mormon yes. is maharashtra's red butterfly correct correct, correct. Uh, and we have heard blue mi- mormons migrate yes we have heard that only birds migrate <laughs> but do butterflies migrate yes 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 butterflies do migrate oh. <laughs> though they look very frail and very delicate but you'll yeah. be surprised that Uh, especially and they are very sensitive to the temperature changes or weather temp- changes so they usually you know migrate when they feel that it's time to go and especially with too much of rains happens in the western ghats so the blue mormon comes down in mumbai it comes down because mm-hmm. comparatively is less rain in the, in the hills mm-hmm. and then it stays for nearly next to 4 uh, to 5 months here mm-hmm. and it goes back but what goes back it is not the same mormon that oh. came it's possibly because third of because the span is very short short correct so it is not the same butterfly that came from uh, the hills it is possibly the third or fourth generation that that uh, is going back oh. and who told it to go back to the same place yeah. is still a mystery <laughs> <laughs> but that's migration it happens all over india hmm. especially right from himalayas also it ha- uh, butterflies come down when the temperature is very cold and then in the south india they actually migrate from india to sri lanka oh. non stop flight across oh. the sea <laughs> and then you see sometimes the yellow ribbons across the cross sky you know when this uh, immigrants fly huh. those uh, immigrant but- yellow butterflies and sometimes they emerge in such a number that they have to leave that place but there is no place for the other generation to feed on uh-huh. there is no host plants remaining so they they migrate and you can sometimes see the beautiful yellow ribbons across the sky and those are those um, yellow butterflies the common immigrant as i said sometimes butterfly mimic yes. for their protection so tell us beautiful story about oak leaf yes, butterfly yes 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 actually mimicry is very much there in the butterflies actually mm-hmm. you'll be surprised and uh, possibly the blue oak leaf or even the orange oak leaf is also is another classic example that how you know nature selectively yeah. uh, you know sculpts mm-hmm. and today we have a butterfly that looks exactly like a dry leaf when it closes wings yeah. and it opens its blue oh. so the, the idea is when it's chased by a bird it flies blue 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 and suddenly it be- uh, closes the wings and becomes a dry leaf and that bird which chasing the butterfly looks for a blue butterfly it can't see because the butterfly has closed the wings uh-huh. and become brown leaf yeah so this kind of mi- uh, mimicry to a leaf mm. 
has actually it's an it's a defensive uh, ad adaptation mm -hmm. for the butterflies so you know butterflies can't bite can't sting so this is how butterflies evolved to protect themselves yeah so being beautiful is not easy yes <laughs> <laughs> so butterflies migrate by their natural instinct yes uh, you said butterflies are very sensitive to temperature seasonal changes yes, yes. so what is the impact on butterflies hmm. on of climate change of course you know butterflies are very very sensitive in fact the migration also happens because i oh, you know the slight changes in temperatures or even the weather condition like suddenly the rains come too much of rain also they don't like mm -hmm. like i was in in the himalayas i saw butterflies coming down when it's so too cold up there mm -hmm. and when it gets warm down they go back again on the on the hills mm -hmm. so that's how they keep on migrating and today the climate scientists are actually using butterflies as a tool to study the climate change because uh -huh. that and first of they all their life indicator of climate change yes they very much indicate the climate change mm -hmm. and they are monitoring butterfly population also uh, along with other animals and birds to see how the impact is there on this um, uh, uh, creatures on the climate change and whether we can possibly take their help mm -hmm. in predicting such climate changes and what can be the impact mm -hmm. so that's a very important tool butterfly does make a important tool in change studying climate change sir you have written three books on butterflies okay. you have done lot of research on butterflies and moths in india how do you observe butterflies actually you know observing butterflies lot more easier than watching birds in mm -hmm. fact and the best part what i've done during the covid time is i've planted the flowering plants around my uh, window sill uh -huh. and so some they come to you yes to yes directly. yes that's the best part and i have planted like you know uh, lemon and kadi patta i have planted around my window sill and they come to lay eggs the common mormon comes and lay eggs the lime butterfly comes and lays eggs on the limbu mm -hmm. so that's uh, fascinating and you can do it so easily uh -huh. and you can actually attract butterflies on your window sill right there you don't have to go out they will come to you <laughs> mm, yeah uh, so butterfly gardening hmm. is a new trend yes it's it's a, it's a global trend hmm. so tell us something about it yes actually um, i'm really happy that you know india has finally caught up that uh, gardening for butterflies mm -hmm. which was absent and it was quite popular in other countries and they have been gardening for butterflies and wildlife so today we have big butterfly gardens and parks are coming in india and lot of people are actually having gardens with uh, to attract butterflies mm -hmm. and the the secret is that you know you have to you can't plant roses and jasmine uh -huh. or uh, you know those kind of uh, or chrysanthemums uh, ha there are special plants and special flowers which butterflies like mm -hmm. so if you know that and you plant those plants like this plant like this is the statue tarpet or the jamaican blue spike mm -hmm. this is a favorite plant of the butterflies, butterflies. you plant this and the butterflies will come that butterflies are messengers of nature they are pollinators what is their important role in our biodiversity in our environment actually you'll be surprised you know next to the bees honey bees mm -hmm. butterflies comes the next mm -hmm. in pollinating mm -hmm. and if you if you have a butterfly population around your farms mm -hmm. and orchards mm -hmm. you'll get better crop mm -hmm. because pollination happens mm -hmm. in absence of pollinators the crops suffer mm -hmm. you get less crops less fruits and less uh, uh, crops yeah. but it has been proved now so we need this not just for beauty for butterflies yeah, but they are actually for our future and our you know it, it is economical importance also they are very important pollinators mm, yeah. yeah so what is the message you would like to give to our viewers actually butterflies are are a indicator indicator of health of the environment you know uh -huh. so while they are flying around you and the birds are singing around you that yeah. means everything All is, well, is okay. all is well all is well well <laughs> moment you stop seeing butterflies flying around you or birds stop singing around you that means something is really wrong mm. having butterflies birds plants around you actually we we are part of this environment we are not something different mm. and if they are healthy that's our future actually and yeah. they indicate that uh, our future is bright yeah butterflies are our future and they indicate that our future is bright Thank you so much Isaac sir for sharing secrets of butterflies with us. Thank I am so, so happy. Much. Yeah, I am so happy and happy butterfly. Yes. Enjoy. Yeah, happy butterfly watching and happy butterfly rearing too. Yes, yes. <laughs>